So what this uh, session is going to be about is tips and tricks with Max. Some of them will be techniques. Some will be features that you might not know about. We'll get in a little bit into some, um, some shortcuts with scripting. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is a, this is a file here by uh, C2 for um, military simulation. And I've got a couple of tanks in this scene. And actually, what I'm going to show you here is uh, um, I'm going to show you um, a tool in Max that a lot of people don't uh, know about. And it's a Max script in, in the examples folder called LOD Tester. And what this is, if I come and select all of the tanks in the scene, there's several different versions of LODs for this object. And uh, if I add all these to the list, I can come in and say display the current LOD, and I can cycle through all of these and I can see them all at once. This is something that you already have installed in Max if you're, if you're using it. And um, so just run this script and you'll be able to see it. Another th cool thing about it is, uh, you know, it works between um, testing like a high-res model and its normal mapped version. You can kind of pop back and forth between the two and you can see just how different it's looking. Uh, you can also hook up a camera to it and uh, put in my maximum camera distance here. And uh, now I can move my camera back and I can see it switching at its different distances. So uh, if I come in here and rotate this camera a little bit, you can see there's a gun on the end of that, of that uh, tank. And you can see it go away. There it goes. And it's switching. You can see it's switching right here through the list. So this is actually a really, really cool tool, and it's really easy to use. And uh, many people don't know that it exists. It works for a lot of things, not just LODs, but just being able to switch back and forth between your models. So uh, let's go look at another one. This is a file here. This is a character from uh, Ubisoft 13. And we appreciate them letting us use uh, some of their content. <coughs> um, and what I'm going to show with this is a couple of uh, different modeling techniques. One thing that's um, going on here in this scene is I have an editable mesh and I have an editable poly. And um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences between the two. And we're going to look at some of the, uh, the edit poly modeling techniques and some of the tools that are in, the, in that feature that, uh, that a lot of people are, are, don't realize. So, uh, so first, let's talk about the differences between edit mesh and edit poly. <coughs> One of the big things is, um, is the way that they deal with textures. So for instance, if I come in and grab this edi editable mesh here, um, we'll be able to, uh, to go and make some changes. So um, let's go ahead and go into vertex mode here. And I have on my large verts in my scene. I've enlarged them just so that you can see them a little bit better. But I'm just going to go somewhere where there's some texture. This guy has a, has a shader on him, actually. If we come in and scroll around, you can see his chin, the, shit, the outline goes away, comes back, goes away. This is just an effects file loaded into Max. So uh, <coughs> his texture also makes him look, uh, look shell shaded. And uh, if we come in here and just go in and do a collapse on this, you can see what's going on with the texture there. And that's what happens when you're uh, with the uh, edible meshes. Now, if we go in, let's see if I can grab this here, pull this back and go to the same model here in Edible Poly, grab these two points where we've got some texture, and I'm just going to collapse these. And you can see the difference that that makes on the texture there. So you see the shoulders here. Edible Poly deals a lot better with texture coordinates. And, um, and it also gives you a couple of extra uh, little shortcuts. <coughs> Now, some of you might say, well, I want to be able to use, I want to be able to see my tries. You know, I want to be able to see how my tries are laid out as I'm modeling and all that kind of stuff. And a good way to do that is just to come in and put a turn to mesh on top of your, uh, on top of your model. So um, let's actually do that. Before I do, I'm going to come in here and um, I'm going to grab a selection of this. So let's just grab this selection. I'm going to get the shoulder and the arm. And uh, I'm going to come into my tools here. And I'm going to grab this selection, and I'm going to copy it, and just add a new map channel in here. And I'm going to paste this into the map channel. And um, this is just my selection. I'm just going to call this arm shoulder. And I'm just going to store that selection in there temporarily so that I can get back to that when I finish. 
So uh, so let's go in here. Now you can see I've got uh, all this stuff on the stack. This is my copying and pasting and stuff like that. And I'm just going to come in here and uh, just go back to an editable poly for, for now. And then we'll put the turn to mesh. And uh, let's go down here and get it. Now turn to mesh, if we go 